For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Newscast. Coming up, China PV installations to experience surge in Q4 2012, SunTech taps UBS to find solution for convertible notes repayment, and Solar Frontier near one gigawatt installation milestone. The Chinese government's actions this summer to further raise the country's PV installation targets appear to have had the desired effect. IMS Research's latest report provides hope to the Chinese market, forecasting a surge in a second half of 2012 with more than 4 gigawatts of PV installations to be completed, taking full-year installations to 5 gigawatts. Only 720 megawatts was installed in China in the first half of the year. According to a development plan released by the National Energy Administration last month, China is expected to invest around 39.5 billion US dollars in domestic solar power generation over a five-year period between 2011 and 2015. A report from market research company SolarBuzz in September noted this surge would have a positive effect on the European market, supporting a 30 gigawatt plus global market this year. Lumbered with debt and looming repayments on convertible notes valued at around 540 million US dollars and due in March 2013, SunTech Power Holdings has employed UBS Investment Bank to find alternative ways to avoid defaulting on buyback. SunTech made the announcement as part of a statement over its strategy to remain the market leader in the solar industry. The company also reiterated its previously announced plan to cut solar cell production to better improve factory utilization rates as part of its cost-cutting exercise. SunTech also said that it was targeting a PV module non-silicon cost structure of approximately 55 US cents per watt by the end of 2012, a 30% reduction from the end of 2011. The largest equipment supplier to the PV industry, Applied Materials, is implementing a major workforce reduction and regional realignment that will see a decrease in the number of employees of between 900 and 1,300, about 6 to 9% of its global workforce. Recently, Applied Materials said it would be shifting production of its PV wafering equipment, formerly HCT, based in Switzerland, to China, home to the largest wafer producers. The company had expected a reduction in capital spending, especially in the PV sector in 2012, though the severity of the overcapacity and financial distress on manufacturers has led to calls for Applied to sell off its PV assets. And in related news, the second largest equipment supplier, Centrotherm Photovoltaics, said it was continuing to restructure the company in the hope of surviving the solar shakeout and has made sweeping changes to its senior management with the notable fall of its enigmatic CTO, Dr. Peter Fath. Current CEO Robert M. Harting will also step down from his position while Peter Augustine will become responsible for core solar cell and module business amongst other management changes. As part of the restructuring efforts under self-administration, Centrotherm said that further management changes would be made in due course. Overcapacity in the crystalline silicon ingot and wafer supply chain has forced materials specialist Cookson to close one of its two ingot crucible production plants in China with immediate effect. The company had closed a similar plant in the Czech Republic in July this year, which has supplied crucibles primarily to the European market. Major European-based wafer producers such as PV Crystalox are down below 30% capacity utilisation on the back of overcapacity and plummeting prices. Having introduced over 20 new conductive paste-based products for the solar sector in the last 18 months, the lack of customer adoption and overall weak demand due to industry overcapacity has forced materials specialist Ferro Corporation to explore strategic options for its solar paste business. 
As a result of the poor business environment in the PV sector, Ferro revised its earnings guidance, proposing to take an impairment charge of between 175 million and 200 million US dollars in its financial third quarter of 2012. Major polysilicon producer GCL Poly has successfully initiated child production of its high-purity polysilicon silane system that produces silane gas in-house. The development will ultimately lead to the use of fluidized bed reactors that offer lower polysilicon production costs due to its almost continuous production process and significantly lower energy consumption. REC and more recently MEMC have been pioneers of FBR process and technology developments. According to a recent report by Burnwriter Research, monosilane technology would gain traction over conventional Siemens processes as it offered the potential for lower cost production. The development of FBR has not been without its challenges for REC and MEMC, so the expectation is for a slow ramp of technology by GCL Poly, according to experts such as Johannes Bernreiter. And finally, thin film producer Solar Frontier is nearing the cumulative one gigawatt installation milestone. This is only the second thin film supplier to be on target to reach that level after First Solar, which has already passed the five gigawatts of installs. Well, that's it for this week. You can keep up to date with all these stories and more on the pvtech.org website. Thanks for watching. See you next time.